In this video, I'm going to decode the anatomy of the spinal cord. That's the superhighway that takes all the information from your brain down to your feet and back up to your head. If you'd like to better understand the spinal cord and how it relates to MS, don't turn away, because that starts right now. Hey! Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. If you're impacted by MS and you want to up your game, please consider subscribing to the channel, and make sure to ring the notifications bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming content. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease that affects the brain, the supercomputer that runs the body, and the spinal cord, the superhighway, that takes all the information from the brain down to the feet and back up. What you see in this cartoon is a man in motion where we've labeled the various parts of his nervous system, and you can see the brain and spinal cord. This video is going to be a deep dive looking at the anatomy of the spinal cord and how it relates to multiple sclerosis. This video will serve as a companion video to one I did a few weeks back where I focused on the anatomy of the brain. I'll throw a link up above in case you want to check that one out. Now, let's jump into a better understanding of the spinal cord. All the information from the brain, the giant supercomputer, is funneled down into a tight little bundle, which is no thicker than my two fingers here. And yet, all of that information has to travel down it. It's really a lot like a superhighway, and so I always think about how busy a highway is with information going up and information going down. And that is exactly what we see when we're looking at the spinal cord. If you have someone step on your foot, it sends a message up your spinal cord to your brain to say, ow, and then your brain sends a message down to your spinal cord to tell you to move your foot. And all of that information is quickly moved along the superhighway. In many ways, the spinal cord is the conduit between the supercomputer and the rest of your body. If you think of the spinal cord as this long cylinder connecting your body to your brain, here is a cartoon cross section where we've cut the spinal cord like you might chop a hot dog. And what you can see is there's a back part to the spinal cord, which in medical terms we call dorsal. Dorsal is uh, Latin or for back. Or the front part, which is ventral. Uh, ventre is uh, front in Latin. And so we label the spinal cord the back portion and the front portion. And what we'll discuss next is that different kinds of information course along the back portion and different kinds of information course along the front portion of the spinal cord. In this cartoon image, we again look at a cross section of the spinal cord. So you take the cord and chop it and then you look down on top of it. And what we've done here is we've labeled which of those uh, tracks or bundles of information are located in which section. And so you see that in the dorsal or the back portion of the spinal cord, this is where the sensory information from the body goes up into the brain. And you can see words like proprioception, deep touch, vibration, they're all coursing up, mostly located in the back of the spinal cord. In the front portion or the ventral portion of the spinal cord, this is where the motor information coming from the brain goes down the spinal cord to get to your arms and legs. And so this slide gives us a better functional understanding of the way the front and the back of the spinal cord are laid out. For a few moments, we'll turn our attention to the sensory information coming from the skin of the body going up the back or the dorsal portion of the spinal cord up into the brain. In fact, each portion of the spinal cord encodes for what we call a dermatome. In other words, there's a strip of skin and all that information from that specific strip of skin feeds into a certain section of the spinal cord. And what you can see on this cartoon is the layout of the dermatomes. So if you look at the person's arm where you see purple, you notice that it's labeled C5. And then if you look at the corresponding cartoon of the spinal cord, you can see that purple section. That means that that stretch of skin is brought back, that information is brought back to that level of the spinal cord. This is very helpful because if someone has numbness coming from spinal cord damage, if we can figure out at what level the numbness is on their skin, we can track it back to where the problem is in the back of the spinal cord. Dermatomes are really helpful. Now the front or the ventral portion of the spinal cord is where the motor pathways lie. So the motor information when your brain says, hey, move your foot, goes down the front of the spinal cord to tell your arm or your leg what to do. And what you see in this picture are what we call the myotomes. 
Each section of the spinal cord sends a message to a particular portion of the body, a particular section of arm or a particular section of leg. And knowing this information, when we do a neurological examination, we can look for evidence of weakness at a certain spinal cord level. We may find that certain muscles are intact and other ones are weak. And that, using our understanding of myotomes, tells us what level of the spinal cord has become involved. Certain physical exam findings on the neuro exam clue us in that there's a problem with the spinal cord. For example, brisk deep tendon reflexes when the doctor smacks your knee or when the doctor moves your leg and finds that it's tight with increased tone, or when the doctor scratches the bottom of your foot and your toe pops up. These are all indicators that there's a problem with the motor pathway in the brain or in the spinal cord. Using the information now from the myotomes and the dermatomes that we just talked about, we can localize the problem to a specific level in the spinal cord. When thinking overall about spinal cord damage, we typically think about three phenomena. We think about weakness below the level of the lesion or where the injury occurred. And typically when testing those muscles, they're going to have brisk reflexes, the tone will be increased, and the toes will pop up. The second thing is numbness at the level and below the level where the injury occurred. And the third can be difficulties with the down there's, with bowel, bladder, or sexual function. Now, someone with spinal cord damage is not required to have all of these things, but we could see all of them. And at what level the damage occurs and whether it's in the front or the back of the spinal cord determines how these symptoms manifest and which ones they have and which ones they haven't. What you see in this picture is actually an MRI of a real person's spinal cord. And I've labeled the back or the dorsum so that you can orient yourself. What we've done in this MRI is we've literally chopped someone in half through their torso and we're looking down. And you can see that white arrow is pointing to an area inside the spinal cord where there's white. This is a demyelinating multiple sclerosis lesion, and we can learn a lot from the picture. We notice that the white is at the back of the spinal cord, and this is in the area where we would expect to see sensory deficits. And sure enough, this person had difficulty with numbness in their body. If you notice, the front portion of the spinal cord is not affected, and this person did not have motor involvement. This makes perfect sense when you understand the anatomy of the spinal cord. This picture again shows you that cross section of the spinal cord where you can see that the white demyelinating portion is in the back. But I now show you another sequence of MRI. This shows you what we call the sagittal or the side view of the spinal cord. And you can see at what level of the spine this lesion occurs. And it occurs at C5. If you remember from earlier in the lecture, that's that purple section, that purple dermatome. And so as expected, the numbness this person experienced was from about here down to include the rest of their body, but their shoulders and up were not numb. This again makes perfect sense when you understand the anatomy of the spinal cord. Hey Village, what questions about spinal cord anatomy do you still have? Leave them in the comments section below and I look forward to reading them and answering them. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. If you'd like to check out that video on the anatomy of the brain, I'll put a link for it right there. YouTube Analytics thinks that you would love this video right there. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Just click the circle with my face. Go ahead, click my face. Until my next video or my next live stream or the next time I see you in clinic, this is Aaron Boster saying take care.